It doesn't matter what I think is gonna happen. It matters what, what happens. And I have this saying, which is, Okay, folks, we got a lot of ground to cover today. I hope everyone had a great trading week. It was a wild one, to say the least. We'll go through the indexes at the end, so stay to the end. But let's get into 10 stocks to buy for next week. Uh, as always, subscribe to this channel. Click all notifications because what we go over here is very timely. Now, see this little break right here? That's what you're looking for. See this wick right here? And then we try to get above it. Then we had this reversal. This is in the right space. This is getting the volume that we finally need. And as these companies start to get a, more and more interesting. So in other words, when they start seeing more and more buying, what happens is you start looking for the next one, right? So we're aware of some of the others that are in the coal space that have moved. This was one that we played with a little bit earlier, uh, and then it just kind of knocked us out, didn't really do what we thought it was gonna do, had a really nasty reversal, and now it's coming back again. But you have this huge base setup. Now, you, don't, you really don't have that cup and formal handle here, but you are setting up again to pop out. What I really like about this is the volume. Now, if you just look at this volume on a relative basis, and all you have to do is just click a button called relative volume and take a look at it. You always want this over two, right? That's your goal to see it over two. We're at five. So that means we're seeing massive volume start to pile into this name, and that's what we want to see. When we go and take a look at this on a weekly, just to get a better perspective of it, you see this line right here? So we've closed over this line, which we haven't closed since this time, right? And then we had that reversal. But what we're seeing is we're seeing more volume come into the name as this continues. As geopolitical tensions kick in, this is going to be the space. It's just, it just is. And there's not really much we can do about it. So we might as well take advantage of that. So what you're going to see here is just really simply you're looking for 20. You see 20, something that we could take a look at. And your stop is only 18 and three quarters, 1880. And then you just want to see how you act going into this. But this is a pretty long base, and this could lead to a very large move up. If you just look at the channel here, this could see $30 fairly quickly. Now you look at it on a monthly basis, and you can see where you're at, and you can see where you started and how that has now flipped, right? This is a great example of how a resistance point has now become, right? Resistance, resistance, support, support, right? You can see that. So when you see things like that, you kind of want to pay attention. And I would focus on this particular space. Now, Weatherford provides drilling for energy in the coal, gas, oil space, right? Primarily more oil and gas. That would be their primary focus. But they, across the spectrum is the best way to look at it. Let's clean up all these lines here and let's just start over. So what we're seeing is we're just seeing a really nice base. We're seeing some volume pop up, but take a look at this. So this was resistance, 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 right? Flips, comes back down. We have that saying, first mouse gets the trap, second mouse gets the cheese. So you can see that pretty clearly right here. Now, what are we gonna do about it? Well, we're gonna wait and see how this bullish engulfing here, right? How that plays out. And if we can get back over this wick, which is roughly $39, I think we should be taking a look at this. In regards to earnings, you are coming into the earnings season, so you need to be aware of that on the 27th. Overall, I think these companies that are in this space are just gonna have exceptional earnings. We're gonna take a look at it on a weekly. This is really hard to pass up. So you can have you have your peak right here before the great fall, right? And again, resistance flips to support, right? And so what do we have right here? We have that flip for the first time ever. So you want to pay attention to things like that. It's really important. It's really important to note when you're flipping these levels and then when you see this volume kick into levels that you really have not seen before, that tells you that you're seeing large institutional buying. Retail's not going to do that. So even though we're not seeing that big push here, when you take a look at this on the weekly, you'll see that big push, right? That's why it's so important to look at multiple time frames. It gives you a different perspective. So very simply on this, all you're really looking for is just to get the 39. I really like stocks like this that have this kind of base and that are breaking multi-year like resistance points. They usually lead to higher prices. This starts to make people pay attention. And the great thing about things like this is you're not in a position where you know that you're gonna have a lot of overhead resistance. You have blue skies above, which is really what you're looking for. Now, I get a lot of requests, so please comment because I do listen to your comments. I get a lot of requests for stocks under $5. So when I put these together every Saturday, I'm gonna start showcasing ones that are out there at uh, under five bucks. If I can find one that makes sense, I'm gonna start showing them. So this TGA makes a lot of sense. So you're looking at a company that does exploration in 
crude oil, natural gas, specifically Egypt, Yemen, that area. What, why I like this is that particular area is going to have to start producing way more than they are right now. And that's just based upon what's going on geopolitically. We all know what's going on. So you could see that level there. And obviously, you're going to see disruption to the oil supply. So they're going to produce more of it. Now, if we just take a look at this, this is just us on the weekly, right? Now let's drill into the daily and let's see what's going on here. So we attempted the, right, the first time, first mouse gets what? The trap, second mouse gets what? The cheese, and you can see the breakout. Now, simple trade, and I always have this saying in the trading room, you trade these like you trade an option. You have to give this room, right? You can't use like a 7% stop on it because you just might as well just buy it and then get stopped out. I mean, it's silly. So just, you have to get in it and be able to use the breakout bar as you're allowed. So you need to be able to use 410. So you get over 450, you wanna use 410 as a stop. So when you're putting your trade on and you wanna calculate your position size, keep that in mind. Where could this go? I don't know, it could have potential. Now here, just take a look at this, right? Everybody knows these trades. When you start flipping up a channel, stocks can go parabolic, that can happen here. If you wanna look at this a little cleaner, you can just see it pretty clearer right here, right? So if we just come to these levels again, you can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? That's why I like multiple time frames. Very rare that we have to really get into the moving averages. I have the 21 and the 50, but when you're breaking out of bases and flipping upper channels, you should pretty much know where you're at. What you're really looking for is understanding where you are not only above the 20 SMA, but again, it never hurts to just make sure that you're at least close to that two, that level, right? You wanna be at least close to it. This is at two. Anything greater than two is really what you wanna see these kinds of moves. You can see how it responds to that. And that's really what you're looking for. Anything over two, I can't stress that enough. Uh, it's not always there, but the ones that seem to work the most, it's there. Now, Arch is one that we've been playing around with for some time. But I see, I, I see this development that finally starting to happen. And as tensions increase, and we know that tensions are increasing, they're not decreasing. Uh, I believe it was this weekend that uh, Russia just said they want all EU officials out of Russia. So that's not a sign of things getting better. It's a sign of things getting worse. So let's get this out of there and just look at this line coming across. You're going to use this as your stop. Keep that in mind. So all you're looking to do is flip this level so they get you to 168 and you're looking for a push. Now, what you're going to have to watch is this. I had it in there, but I wanted to take it out so you can see it. You're going to want to watch this line. Why? Because when you get up to here, if you reject, this is you're probably going to want to sell into it or at least trim, right? You need to make sure that you break these and go. And you can see them pretty clear right here. So you want to make sure you can see this. Hold on, let's draw it this way. Be, clean, be clear. We can see it right here pretty clean, right? So when we get up to that level, we want to watch it. We also like when we flip these dojis, which we did. Long-legged dojis are a sign of uncertainty, and that's a glaring sign of uncertainty. So just keep that in mind. I really like the space. You know, I'm not going to use the dad joke and say coal's on fire, but I just did. Uh, it's on fire. You need to look at the space. So Again, stay to the end because I do want to go over the indexes. There's a lot that looked like it was going to change, but it didn't. And uh, I think we just need to formulate that and talk about it a little bit. But you see what's going on right here? So I have no volume, right? What did I just say? You need to have volume. So we're not ready for prime time. What I want you to do here is we were fortunate enough in the newsletter, if you don't get a, a copy of it, there's a free version in the link below in the description. But we were fortunate enough here to get in and get triggered. And we did on a much smaller pattern on a much smaller time frame, which is fine, it happens. And uh, it played out perfectly, right? It gave us that big spike in volume, thought we were gonna have that big push. Didn't happen, but got us in there. So now at least we're up $3 in the trade, but the trade's not over. So you're gonna see fertilizer, can, fertilizer stocks continue to go up because of what's going on. You're gonna have massive demand for food. You're already seeing riots for food. Uh, you're seeing issues in Shanghai. You're seeing issues in Iraq. Uh, there were some issues in South America already. This is not gonna go away. So you're gonna see prices in fertilizer continue to climb. And as we see prices in fertilizer rise, these stocks are gonna to continue to push higher. You're also gonna see grains go higher and shippers of grains go higher, which we're gonna to get to in a minute. All you're looking to do is flip this level. You get to 113 and you wanna be involved. What you wanna make sure of is the time that you get involved, that you're at least flipping this line if you're not gonna see that 2X. I'm not sure why this one's not getting the love that something like this is getting. This was another one we had in the newsletter. Uh, and you're seeing more volume come in, but you're still not seeing that huge volume. And I'm not really sure why you're not seeing that, but you're not. And it's kind of silly when you really look at fertilizer prices. I mean, it's very clear that they're going higher. 
Now, what else is really nice about this one? Let's clear this line out for a minute just so you can see this. So you have a really clearly defined upper channel here. So if you get up to this level again, which is roughly 116, 117, you got to watch these upper channels, right? But if you can get up to that line, we can actually clone these and just see where it fits. Take a look at this and see if it fits anywhere down here. Oh, that's kind of convenient, isn't it? So you always want to clone these because you want the same trajectory of each line because it gives you a clear picture of what's going on, right? So anyway, what we want to do is when we get to the top of this, we would just want to see if we flip. If we don't, you might want to trim into that, right? This is not the kind of market you, it's not a breakout market. And geopolitical, it, any type of release of tensions can sell these off, even if it's in the short term. This was another one I was looking at, Tello Energy, oil and gas exploration. They do that in the Gulf of, of Mexico. So something else for us to look at, you see this little spike over here that got my attention. This little break got my attention. The fact that we were unable to break this a couple times, right? What's the saying? First mouse gets the trap, second mouse gets the cheese, right? So that's what happens here. People throw in the towel and then all of a sudden they'll come back to like the 21 and then it'll catch and then everybody will wonder what they did, right? Here you're reevaluating your life and then here you're chasing it. So what we want to do is we want to look for these breakouts, but we want to be cognizant of where they're holding as well, right? So that if we do miss this and it comes back down to here and the macro situation hasn't changed, we don't want to get rid of the idea. We just want to look for another entry, right? So what we're going to look for is just look for this to get above that wick. We know that wicks are price rejection. We're above this long-legged doji. That's exactly what you want to see. Now, take a look at this, right? Bonk, 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 right? Support becomes what? Resistance. You can see that resistance there for two weeks. Tries again, bonk. Gives you the old gravestone bar. You're going to hang in there. It doesn't work out. Pulls all the way back down. Comes up again. Rejection. What are we through? We're through. So we are through a major resistance point. Why am I pointing this out? Because there's nothing to stop us now until this level. So if we can get above this level right here, which is 2040, we could push to 2210. And if we can get through 2210, they're just gonna walk it up. And I think that's very feasible, 25 and three quarters, right? And then you just keep going. There's very little reason to think that these stocks can't go back into the high 20s and, and that these oil and energy names and coal names can't go higher. But other spaces that we need to look at is you need to understand shipping a little bit. And this is a, a very large grain shipper that we were looking at a little earlier. One thing I tell people that follow along with us here is that you want to take these ideas and you want to throw them into a major watch list and go back to that watch list once a week. Sometimes I'm like a month early or a couple weeks early and you want to make sure that you still have the ideas there um, and that you're just not looking for, you know, just the newest thing. You want what works, right? The goal is to make money. It doesn't matter if it's the new stock or the old stock. 2445, see that level right there? We finally bonked over it. And then we nice little close, just get over that wick, right? Wicks are price rejection. Let's just clear it, 25 bucks, and I think it's on. And I think people are starting to actually understand, earnings are coming up, but I think people are starting to finally understand the shipper and how it's different than like Zim and some of the others. You can see this reversal where, to me, it's not a super technical bullish engulfing because I like the bodies to encompass but this is a super reversal and it's actually setting you up for something that is referred to as a megaphone pattern. It's not a perfect one, but it's there. And usually megaphone patterns lean to huge moves and that's what has my attention about this. No, it's not perfect, but like all things, nothing really is, right? So you wanna make sure that you push. You're looking for an understanding of the pattern. The pattern doesn't always have to be exact, just like this, right? This is a dragonfly, but at the same time, you wouldn't realize that if you were going to be super technical and not and look at that wick because dragonflies aren't supposed to have wicks at the top. Anyway, this this is setting you up to go higher. On top of the megaphone, you can see this right here, right? So now we have another level that we could flip on top of a megaphone. When you start capitalizing on patterns like this and you put them together and they can break out thin, thinly named stocks or thinly traded stocks. I mean, it's only a couple of million shares. So this is pretty easy for this to fly. ATI is a great example of one that we had on the list before, and we were just we were just way too early on the name. Uh, so they make specialty alloys, aerospace, construction, automotive, electrical, energy, right? So you can see the current theme here. Countries are hoarding; it's not going to go away. They're just rotating what they're hoarding. Here's your level. Here's what I like about names like this. When you have based for a period of time, and let's say that this is based for almost two months now, and then you start breaking out, you want to pay attention, 
right? Because this base is just a battle the entire time, right? See all these wicks and selling, okay? And then you hit the 21 day and you don't know what's gonna happen and then this happens. You wanna pay attention because this is not, just like think of it like a pressurized bottle and then a decision's been made on what's gonna happen. So you wanna flip that level and look for 30 and three quarters as this breaks out. You can see you have a base here, but again, the best thing to do is to take a look at this uh, and just kind of see where, hey, what's going on here and what levels really need to flip in order for this to really go. So let's just take the high point of this and take a look at that. Well, that's interesting because if I can flip this and I can flip that level and close over this on the weekly, it gets me through 2018 resistance. Well, that's not a bad thing, right? So if we can pop out over this, this gives us massive potential for a multi-year move. So I, I like this name and I think you're gonna see things like this continue for some time. SMPL, just a little food provider company, but look at this. Look at this little volume spike right here. And the one thing I wanna point out that I really have rarely shown so far is I really have talked about moving averages because everything I'm looking at is not in tech. Everything I'm focused on is either having earnings or has above average volume and is breaking out after it broke out once, right? What is the one thing that's hurting all of us trading right now? Buying breakouts that are failing. So there's a rule and it's an old Can Slim rule, right? So in other words, what, the, what Can Slim would do, what Bill O'Neill would do is like, let's say you buy this breakout and this breakout doesn't work he would add to the position and put, make the position size even stronger the second time that it gets through, right? It's a little pro tip. Why would you do that? Second time around, you have a higher degree of probability of them breaking, so it's payback time. So start looking for patterns like this, ones that have broken, come back down, right? They make you reevaluate while you're even trading, and then they break out and go. You wanna pay attention to those. And again, simply, Flip the wick, that's all we're looking for here. So basically just call it 44. You need to be willing to get to 42. So that means you don't put on a big enough trade that you're not gonna close it down here and your ego is gonna kick in, right? We've all done that before. I mean, uh, it's how I started trading, same way. I wanna show you this. What happens when we flip upper channels? We can go parabolic, right? There's not a lot of volume here, okay? When you start looking at these kinds of charts, okay? I mean, one million, a million dollars. So you're thinking 40, 50 million can move that? It's not, that's nothing for the market if they want to start chasing performance. KBR, Engineering and Construction Services for Petrochemicals. So very simple. You broke out, you formed this base for a period of time where you did not make a decision, right? Let's just show you this breakout, okay? So, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. You break down, but then you don't have follow through. You break out, but then you don't have follow through. Break out, no follow through, right? So what we now have is we have a clear breakout, get above this wick and it's risk on. Why is this appealing? The above average volume over 20 days. $57 makes it really clean. You're holding this 54, which gives you support of a 21 day. You're obviously above the five and the eight just by looking at it, but we might as well just put it in so people get it, right? So now what else would we focus on? Maybe we'll take a look at the weeklies and see how that looks. And you can see exactly what I see, a massive breakout here and why this is pushing higher. So we again, you can see the theme here. Now, I just wanna point something out because this was something that I thought was gonna break and then it didn't. And I wanna get that point across. And this is even notes from the newsletter. So you can see that we broke the two and three quarters level, might be due for a rest, closed the five day for the first time in weeks. RSI is back under. Now, just keep that up there for a moment. And it's really important for everybody to kind of get this, okay? Because I want people to understand this. And when I run through this, there's there's no guarantees on anything. When I came in that day, and I came in on uh, Thursday, I keep forgetting it's the, we, have, we had the break today. So when you are looking at this, right, my premise was that we broke the five day, we, we're gonna break down, and I come in with a game plan that this is gonna break down, therefore, if this is gonna break down, and remember this, this is the point of me going over this, if the 10 is going to rally, meaning yield's gonna rally, people are gonna buy bonds, tech's gonna rally, okay? So this was setting me up perfectly for this to break out. That's not what happened. And it's important for me to point this out because it doesn't matter what I think is gonna happen, it matters what, what happens. And I have this saying, which is, trade what's in front of you. I can come in with a theory, but I didn't know Michigan sediment was gonna be a number, I believe it came in around 65, 66. I don't have it in front of me. And we were looking for 58. Well, that's all the market needed to see. And now we're on track for this to hit three and the entire thesis that I came in with is changed. So, and you can see that now, let's get into it. This tried to rally, it failed. Does that mean that we're definitely gonna break down? No, we could go up and try again. But what this does mean is now we are below the five day. So my thesis of 
tech rallying has changed. It's what, hence why you're not seeing any tech in here. And let's just run through the indexes. See how this is reversed too? This is now what we would call a bearish engulfing. And this is not something you want to play with. You're down below the five, you're down below the, the 50. And I have to honor that right? I have to honor the fact that this has changed. I have to respect it. And that's what you have to kind of focus on. If you're not going to have your head on a swivel in this market, you, you probably should be sitting out or be trading smaller position sizes because nothing's really been resolved here. And from what we're starting to see, you're starting to see signs that maybe this does push a little bit higher. So we just don't know yet. But if you look at like the socks, this is when I said, I said this the other day, we're curling up. I think that you could be taking a look at the SOXL. I thought we were going to break the day before. We were extremely strong. We closed over the five day. Guess what happened? The flim flam. So they bid me up, got me over, right? And then they reversed and took out the low. Okay. Now what's going to happen is people are going to short here. And then what will happen is we'll probably reverse again. So you have to understand the games that are going on here right now. And you have to trade accordingly. If you're having issue with this, that's why you'll notice that the 10 that we went over today have absolutely nothing to do with anything that is tech related or high beta related. It is just going off a macro trade that is going on right now, which is called energy. And just take a look at this so you can understand it, right? you're making secular moves okay these are massive moves that don't go away the only time in history that we have to compare this to is 1980 81 where the cpi was higher than the 10-year bond that's the only other time in the past 40 plus years that we've been in a situation like this and commodities went on a multi-year run which is why we're starting to focus that way and we've been focused that way for months but we like trading tech because we know that that's where you can see the massive returns so that's what I have. Any questions, as always, reach out. Please comment on how I can make these videos better and trade to win on Monday. Time frame. We are going to be using a two minute time frame. If you're not familiar with this, every trading platform has a two minute time frame. You just have to go in and change your settings. We are going to use a two minute time frame because based upon the movement of algorithms and high frequency traders, the one minute has entirely too much noise now. As always, we have to adapt to what is going on around us.